Hi, my name is Logan, and in this lecture we're going to cover the basics of cell membrane physiology and cell membrane transport. Understanding membrane transport begins with understanding the plasma membrane itself. And so basically, you need to know that every cell has a plasma membrane, and that that membrane separates the internal contents of the cell from everything outside, which we refer to collectively as its environment. And we just want to note here that a cell's environment is anything outside its plasma membrane. So for single-celled organisms, that could be the world at large. For multicellular organisms, it gets a little bit more complex. And an example would be a red blood cell. Its external environment is the blood that it floats in. So it's all relative to the cell itself, but external environment simply means everything outside of the cell. In this lecture, we're going to look at how cell membranes serve as permeability barriers. And we're going to start to understand the physiology of cell membranes by looking at their structure. Because in biology, function always follows structure. We're going to look at how cell membranes make homeostasis possible, how they serve as anchors for proteins, and how they can enclose certain organelle, in which case they're not called cell membranes, they're simply called lipid bilayers. We're going to look at how things move across lipid bilayers, and we're going to pay special attention to gradients and the basic processes of diffusion and the special case of diffusion known as osmosis. Then we're going to talk about specific mechanisms, and we're going to focus on the differences between passive transport across a membrane and active transport across a membrane. So the first thing we're going to look at is membrane structure. And like I said, in biology, function is always a result of structure. So if you understand structure, you'll understand function. In this first section, we're going to look at phospholipids, which are the primary component of cell membranes and make up the lipid bilayer. We're going to look at proteins that are inserted into the membrane. And we're going to discuss how together phospholipids and proteins determine the permeability of a specific membrane, something that's often referred to as barrier function. And then we're going to end with a little bit about homeostasis and how the permeability of a membrane is related to homeostasis of the cell. So the most important component of a cell membrane is the phospholipids that make up the phospholipid bilayer. And phospholipids are a very special type of molecule referred to as an amphipathic molecule. And what that term means is that the molecule has two very distinct regions. It has a region that likes to be dissolved in water, and it has a region that doesn't like to be dissolved in water. In phospholipids, the head region, which is represented here in blue, is hydrophilic, which means it likes to be dissolved in water. The tail region, which is represented here in orange, is hydrophobic and doesn't like to be dissolved in water. If you've ever looked at a mixture of salad dressing, you shake it up and you note that bubbles of oil form. And the reason those bubbles of oil form is because oil doesn't like to be dissolved in water. It's hydrophobic. And so all of the oil attempts to clump together. And if you let that salad dressing sit long enough, the oil and water will separate perfectly because oil doesn't want to be dissolved in water and water doesn't want to be dissolved in oil. That process is very important to the structure of phospholipid bilayers that make up cell membranes. So you've probably all seen a similar picture to this. And if you look at the bottom one labeled bilayer, you see a bunch of phospholipid molecules all clumped together. And you need to note something very important about this structure. The hydrophobic tails of the phospholipid molecules are touching. And so if you think of this structure as being dissolved in water, like all cells are, then you realize that the hydrophobic tail regions are protected from the water by the hydrophilic head regions. 
you'll also note that this bilayer isn't the perfect structure because there's still some of the hydrophobic tail exposed to water. And that's why oil molecules form bubbles. And phospholipids do the same thing. If you look above the bilayer, you see two other images, a micelle and a liposome. A micelle is a smaller form of a bubble formed by phospholipids. And you see that all of the hydrophobic tails are on the inside, so they're happy because they're with other hydrophobic substances. All of the hydrophilic heads are on the outside, and they're happy because they're touching the water. A bigger structure can form as well, and it, it uses the bilayer. You'll note that the micelle is a single layer of phospholipids, while the liposome is two layers of phospholipids. And so if we start working from the outside in, we know the outside is a water environment, which we call aqueous. Then we get to the hydrophilic heads of the first layer of phospholipid, and they're happy because they're touching water. We move down to the hydrophobic tails of the first layer of phospholipid, and they're happy because they're touching the hydrophobic tails of the second layer of phospholipid. Finally, we get to the hydrophilic heads of the second layer of phospholipid, and they're happy because this internal cavity of the liposome has trapped some water. And so they're dissolved in water. So this is a very stable structure because all parts of the phospholipid are happy. And this, in fact, is the basic structure of every cell. Now we said that cells live in aqueous environments, which means the outside of a cell is water, basically water and the stuff dissolved in it. The internal environment of a cell is also an aqueous environment. That means everything inside and outside the cell is hydrophilic. It likes water. They're polar substances. That also means that most of those things are poorly soluble in nonpolar environments in that lipid tail region of the phospholipid bilayer. So a lot of things can't cross the cell membrane. And this is why the phospholipid bilayer provides an excellent barrier to aqueous substances. And that's why we call it a permeability barrier. Because most molecules and ions can't flow through this barrier on their own. They simply can't dissolve in the lipid component of the bilayer, and therefore they can't get through. And this allows cells to set up a very drastic difference in their internal component, in their internal environment, versus their external environment, because things can't get out and things can't get in easily. Now we're going to talk briefly about a few things that can pass through the membrane, like carbon dioxide, oxygen, ethanol, and urea. And we're going to note a few things about these molecules that make them different and make them capable of diffusing through the bilayer. Before we get to that, though, I want to talk about membrane proteins. Because the other major component of every cell membrane is proteins. So you've got lipid molecules, phospholipids, which are fat, and then you've got proteins. Proteins differ from one cell to another. So the proteins you find in a heart cell aren't going to be the same as a liver cell. And they play a bunch of very important roles. First of all, they aid in cell recognition. They let your immune system know that your heart cells belong there. That way they don't attack your heart cells. Proteins also play a role in cell signaling. They help uh, hormones that are put out by, say, the pancreas interact with cells in the muscles or in fat. They're very important to cell structure. They determine the shape of a cell and how strong it is. And finally, what we're interested in is membrane transport. And it turns out that proteins control almost all of what enters and exits a cell. Because most substances can't get through the lipid bilayer without some assistance, they need proteins to help them. And so cells use these proteins to set up gradients, which we're going to talk about shortly. And they basically allow cells to change their internal environment. So proteins let cells import nutrients, they let them expel waste, and they let them send and receive signals. 
So together, the phospholipid barrier function and the membrane transport function that comes about because of proteins allows cells to maintain a consistent internal environment. And that's basically the definition of homeostasis. A cell is able to maintain its internal contents within very strict limits, and that is what allows cells to live. Homeostasis includes everything. It includes pH, it includes temperature, it includes things like blood glucose, it includes things like water balance. Cells are actively regulating dozens of parameters in order to maintain their existence and adapt to their external environment.